Ordinary Least Squares, Wikipedia Article Audio In statistics, ordinary least squares or linear least squares is a method for estimating the unknown parameters in a linear regression model. Oles chooses the parameters of a linear function of a set of explanatory variables by minimizing the sum of the squares of the differences between the observed dependent variable in the given data set and those predicted by the linear function. Geometrically this is seen as the sum of the squared distances, parallel to the axis of the dependent variable, between each data point in the set and the corresponding point on the regression line a euro the smaller the differences, the better the model fits the data. The resulting estimator can be expressed by a simple formula, especially in the case of a single regressor on the right-hand side. Linear Model Assumptions Classical Linear Regression Model Independent and identically distributed Time series model Estimation Simple regression model Alternative derivations Geometric approach Maximum likelihood Generalized method of moments Finite sample properties Assuming normality Influential observations Partitioned regression Constrained estimation Large sample properties Intervals Hypothesis testing Example with real data Sensitivity to rounding The OLS estimator is consistent when the regressors are exogenous and optimal in the class of linear unbiased estimators when the errors are homocedastic and serially uncorrelated. Under these conditions, the method of OLS provides minimum variance mean unbiased estimation when the errors have finite variances. Under the additional assumption that the errors are normally distributed, OLS is the maximum likelihood estimator. OLS is used in fields as diverse as economics, political science, psychology, and engineering. Suppose the data consists of n observations n, i equals 1. Each observation i includes a scalar response y i and a vector of values of p predictors x i j for j equals 1, p. In a linear regression model the response variable is a linear function of the regressors. Or in vector form. Where I superscript 2 is a PA1 vector of unknown parameters, IIS are unobserved scalar random variables which account for the discrepancy between the actually observed responses YI and the predicted outcomes XIT I superscript 2, and T denotes matrix transpose so that xti superscript 2 is the dot product between the vectors x and i superscript 2. This model can also be written in matrix notation as where y and i are na1 vectors, and x is an nap matrix of regressors, which is also sometimes called the design matrix. As a rule, the constant term is always included in the set of regressors x, say, by taking x i 1 equals 1 for all i equals 1, a euro, n. The coefficient i superscript 2 1 corresponding to this regressor is called the intercept. There may be some relationship between the regressors. For instance, the third regressor may be the square of the second regressor. In this case we have a quadratic model in the second regressor. But this is still considered a linear model because it is linear in the I superscript 2S. There are several different frameworks in which the linear regression model can be cast in order to make the OLS technique applicable. Each of these settings produces the same formulas and same results. 
The only difference is the interpretation and the assumptions which have to be imposed in order for the method to give meaningful results. The choice of the applicable framework depends mostly on the nature of data in hand, and on the inference task which has to be performed. One of the lines of difference in interpretation is whether to treat the regressors as random variables, or as predefined constants. In the first case the regressors XI are random and sampled together with the YIS from some population, as in an observational study. This approach allows for more natural study of the asymptotic properties of the estimators. In the other interpretation, the regressors X are treated as known constants set by a design, and Y is sampled conditionally on the values of X as in an experiment. For practical purposes, this distinction is often unimportant, since estimation and inference is carried out while conditioning on X. All results stated in this article are within the random design framework. The classical model focuses on the finite sample estimation and inference, meaning that the number of observations n is fixed. This contrasts with the other approaches, which study the asymptotic behavior of oles, and in which the number of observations is allowed to grow to infinity. In some applications, especially with cross-sectional data, an additional assumption is imposed a euro that all observations are independent and identically distributed. This means that all observations are taken from a random sample which makes all the assumptions listed earlier simpler and easier to interpret. Also this framework allows one to state asymptotic results which are understood as a theoretical possibility of fetching new independent observations from the data generating process. The list of assumptions in this case is Suppose B is a candidate value for the parameter vector I superscript 2. The quantity YIAXITB, called the residual for the ITH observation, measures the vertical distance between the data point and the hyperplane y equals xtb, and thus assesses the degree of fit between the actual data and the model. The sum of squared residuals or residual sum of squares is a measure of the overall model fit. Where t denotes the matrix transpose, and the rows of x, denoting the values of all the independent variables associated with a particular value of the dependent variable, are xi equals xit. The value of b which minimizes this sum is called the OLS estimator for i superscript 2. The function s is quadratic in b with positive definite hessian, and therefore this function possesses a unique global minimum at b equals i superscript 2 which can be given by the explicit formula or equivalently in matrix form the matrix x t x a 1 x t x is called the maria euro penrose pseudo inverse matrix of x this formulation highlights the point that estimation can be carried out if and only if there is no perfect multicollinearity between the explanatory variables, to have no inverse. After we have estimated I superscript 2, the fitted values from the regression will be where P equals XA1 XT is the projection matrix onto the space V spanned by the columns of X. This matrix P is also sometimes called the hat matrix because it puts a hat onto the variable Y. Another matrix, closely related to P is the annihilator matrix M equals INAP, this is a projection matrix onto the space orthogonal to V. Both matrices P and M are symmetric and idempotent, and relate to the data matrix X via identities P, X, equals, x, and mx equals 0. Matrix M creates the residuals from the regression. Using these residuals we can estimate the value of 2. 
The numerator, NAP, is the statistical degrees of freedom. The first quantity, S2, is the OLS estimate for 2, whereas the second, 2, is the MLE estimate for 2. The two estimators are quite similar in large samples, the first one is always unbiased, while the second is biased but minimizes the mean squared error of the estimator. In practice S2 is used more often, since it is more convenient for the hypothesis testing. The square root of S2 is called the standard error of the regression, or standard error of the equation. It is common to assess the goodness of fit of the OLS regression by comparing how much the initial variation in the sample can be reduced by regressing onto X. The coefficient of determination R2 is defined as a ratio of explained variance to the total variance of the dependent variable Y. Where TSS is the total sum of squares for the dependent variable, L equals INA 11 T slash N, and 1 is an NA1 vector of 1s. In order for R2 to be meaningful, the matrix X of data on regressors must contain a column vector of 1s to represent the constant whose coefficient is the regression intercept. In that case, R2 will always be a number between 0 and 1, with values close to 1 indicating a good degree of fit. The variance in the prediction of the independent variable as a function of the dependent variable is given in the article polynomial least squares. If the data matrix X contains only two variables, a constant and a scalar regressor XI, then this is called the simple regression model. This case is often considered in the beginner statistics classes as it provides much simpler formulas even suitable for manual calculation. The parameters are commonly denoted as The least squares estimates in this case are given by simple formulas. Where VAR and COV are sample parameters. In the previous section the least squares estimator, I superscript 2, was obtained as a value that minimizes the sum of squared residuals of the model. However it is also possible to derive the same estimator from other approaches. In all cases the formula for OLS estimator remains the same, I superscript 2 equals A1XTY, the only difference is in how we interpret this result. For mathematicians, OLS is an approximate solution to an overdetermined system of linear equations x i superscript 2 a per thousand y, where i superscript 2 is the unknown. Assuming the system cannot be solved exactly, we are looking for a solution that could provide the smallest discrepancy between the right and left hand sides. In other words, we are looking for the solution that satisfies where A is the standard L2 norm in the n-dimensional Euclidean space Rn. The predicted quantity Xi superscript 2 is just a certain linear combination of the vectors of regressors. Thus, the residual vector Ya Xi superscript 2 will have the smallest length when Y is projected orthogonally onto the linear subspace spanned by the columns of X. The OLS estimator, I superscript 2, in this case can be interpreted as the coefficients of vector decomposition of y equals pi along the basis of x. Correct specification The linear functional form is correctly specified, strict exogeneity. The errors in the regression should have conditional mean 0, e, a, i, a pound, x, equals, 0, equals 0. It observations, is independent from, and has the same distribution as, for all i a per thousand j, no perfect multicollinearity, qxx equals e is a positive definite matrix, exogeneity, e equals 0, homocedasticity, var equals 2. 
The coefficient column gives the least squares estimates of parameters I superscript 2J, the STD errors column shows standard errors of each coefficient estimate, J, equals, 2, Q, X, X, A, 1, J, J, 1, 2, equals backslash left backslash right. The t-statistic and p-value columns are testing whether any of the coefficients might be equal to zero. The t-statistic is calculated simply as t equals i superscript 2 j slash j slash. If the errors i follow a normal distribution, t follows a student t-distribution. Under weaker conditions, T is asymptotically normal. Large values of T indicate that the null hypothesis can be rejected and that the corresponding coefficient is not zero. The second column, P value, expresses the results of the hypothesis test as a significance level. Conventionally, P values smaller than 0.05 are taken as evidence that the population coefficient is non zero. R squared is the coefficient of determination indicating goodness of fit of the regression. This statistic will be equal to 1 if fit is perfect, and to 0 when regressors X have no explanatory power whatsoever. This is a biased estimate of the population R squared, and will never decrease if additional regressors are added, even if they are irrelevant. Adjusted R squared is a slightly modified version of R, 2, designed to penalize for the excess number of regressors which do not add to the explanatory power of the regression. This statistic is always smaller than, R, 2, can decrease as new regressors are added, and even be negative for poorly fitting models. Residuals against the explanatory variables in the model a nonlinear relation between these variables suggests that the linearity of the conditional mean function may not hold. Different levels of variability in the residuals for different levels of the explanatory variables suggests possible heterosidasticity, residuals against explanatory variables not in the model. Any relation of the residuals to these variables would suggest considering these variables for inclusion in the model residuals against the fitted values, y, dot, residuals against the preceding residual. This plot may identify serial correlations in the residuals. Another way of looking at it is to consider the regression line to be a weighted average of the lines passing through the combination of any two points in the data set. Although this way of calculation is more computationally expensive, it provides a better intuition on OLS. The OLS estimator is identical to the maximum likelihood estimator under the normality assumption for the error terms. This normality assumption has historical importance, as it provided the basis for the early work in linear regression analysis by Yule and Pearson. From the properties of MLE, we can infer that the OLS estimator is asymptotically efficient if the normality assumption is satisfied. In that case the OLS estimator can also be viewed as a GMM estimator arising from the moment conditions. These moment conditions state that the regressors should be uncorrelated with the errors. Since XI is a p-vector, the number of moment conditions is equal to the dimension of the parameter vector I superscript 2, and thus the system is exactly identified. This is the so-called classical GMM case, when the estimator does not depend on the choice of the weighting matrix. Note that the original strict exogeneity assumption E equals 0 implies a far richer set of moment conditions than stated above. In particular, this assumption implies that for any vector function A e, the moment condition E A I I equals zero will hold. However it can be shown using the gaza euro markov theorem that the optimal choice of function A e is to take A e equals x, 
which results in the moment equation posted above. First of all, under the strict exogeneity assumption the OLS estimators, I superscript 2, and S2 are unbiased, meaning that their expected values coincide with the true values of the parameters. If the strict exogeneity does not hold, then these estimators will be biased in finite samples. The variance covariance matrix of I superscript 2 is equal to in particular, the standard error of each coefficient, I superscript 2, J, is equal to square root of the JTH diagonal element of this matrix. The estimate of this standard error is obtained by replacing the unknown quantity 2 with its estimate S2. Thus, it can also be easily shown that the estimator, I superscript 2, is uncorrelated with the residuals from the model. The Gaza Euro Markov theorem states that under the spherical errors assumption, the estimator, I superscript 2, is efficient in the class of linear unbiased estimators. This is called the best linear unbiased estimator. Efficiency should be understood as if we were to find some other estimator, I superscript 2 which would be linear in Y and unbiased, then. In the sense that this is a non-negative definite matrix. This theorem establishes optimality only in the class of linear unbiased estimators, which is quite restrictive. Depending on the distribution of the error terms I, other, non-linear estimators may provide better results than OLS. The properties listed so far are all valid regardless of the underlying distribution of the error terms. However, if you are willing to assume that the normality assumption holds, then additional properties of the OLS estimators can be stated. The estimator, I superscript 2, is normally distributed, with mean and variance as given before. This estimator reaches the chroma copyright RA Euro Rao bound for the model, and thus is optimal in the class of all unbiased estimators. Note that unlike the Gaza Euro Markov theorem, this result establishes optimality among both linear and nonlinear estimators, but only in the case of normally distributed error terms. The estimator S2 will be proportional to the chi squared distribution. The variance of this estimator is equal to 2 4 slash, which does not attain the chroma copyright RA Euro Rao bound of 2 4 slash N. However it was shown that there are no unbiased estimators of 2 with variance smaller than that of the estimator S2. If we are willing to allow biased estimators, and consider the class of estimators that are proportional to the sum of squared residuals of the model, then the best estimator in this class will be 2 equals SSR slash, which even beats the chroma copyright RA Euro Rao bound in case when there is only one regressor. Moreover, the estimators, I superscript 2, and S2 are independent, the fact which comes in useful when constructing the T and F tests for the regression. As was mentioned before, the estimator, I superscript 2, is linear in Y, meaning that it represents a linear combination of the dependent variables YI. The weights in this linear combination are functions of the regressors X, and generally are unequal. The observations with high weights are called influential because they have a more pronounced effect on the value of the estimator. To analyze which observations are influential we remove a specific JTH observation and consider how much the estimated quantities are going to change. It can be shown that the change in the OLS estimator for I superscript 2 will be equal to where HJ equals XJTA1 XJ is the JTH diagonal element of the hat matrix P and xj is the vector of regressors corresponding to the jth observation. Similarly, 
the change in the predicted value for JTH observation resulting from omitting that observation from the data set will be equal to from the properties of the hat matrix, 0 a per thousand h j a per thousand 1, and they sum up to p, so that on average h j a per thousand p slash n. These quantities h j are called the leverages, and observations with high h j are called leverage points. Usually the observations with high leverage ought to be scrutinized more carefully, in case they are erroneous or outliers, or in some other way atypical of the rest of the data set. Sometimes the variables and corresponding parameters in the regression can be logically split into two groups, so that the regression takes form. Where x1 and x2 have dimensions NAP1, NAP2, and I superscript 2 1, I superscript 2 2 are P1 A1 and P2 A1 vectors, with P1 plus P2 equals P. The Friska Euro Wa Euro Laval theorem states that in this regression the residuals, I, and the OLS estimate, I superscript 2, 2, will be numerically identical to the residuals and the OLS estimate for I superscript 2 2 in the following regression. Where M1 is the annihilator matrix for regressors X1. The theorem can be used to establish a number of theoretical results. For example, having a regression with a constant and another regressor is equivalent to subtracting the means from the dependent variable and the regressor and then running the regression for the demeaned variables but without the constant term. Suppose it is known that the coefficients in the regression satisfy a system of linear equations. Where Q is a P a Q matrix of full rank, and C is a Q a 1 vector of known constants, where Q P. In this case least squares estimation is equivalent to minimizing the sum of squared residuals of the model subject to the constraint A. The constrained least squares estimator can be given by an explicit formula. This expression for the constrained estimator is valid as long as the matrix XTX is invertible. It was assumed from the beginning of this article that this matrix is of full rank, and it was noted that when the rank condition fails, I superscript 2 will not be identifiable. However it may happen that adding the restriction A makes I superscript 2 identifiable, in which case one would like to find the formula for the estimator. The estimator is equal to Where R is a P A matrix such that the matrix is non-singular, and R T Q equals 0. Such a matrix can always be found, although generally it is not unique. The second formula coincides with the first in case when xtx is invertible. The least squares estimators are point estimates of the linear regression model parameters I superscript 2. However, generally we also want to know how close those estimates might be to the true values of parameters. In other words, we want to construct the interval estimates. Since we haven't made any assumption about the distribution of error term ii, it is impossible to infer the distribution of the estimators, i superscript 2, and, 2. Nevertheless, we can apply the central limit theorem to derive their asymptotic properties as sample size n goes to infinity. While the sample size is necessarily finite, it is customary to assume that n is large enough so that the true distribution of the OLS estimator is close to its asymptotic limit. We can show that under the model assumptions, the least squares estimator for I superscript 2 is consistent and asymptotically normal. Where, Q, X, X, equals, X, T, X, equals X, X. Using this asymptotic distribution, approximate two-sided confidence intervals for the JTH component of the vector, 
I superscript 2, can be constructed as where Q denotes the Chuan tile function of standard normal distribution, and JJ is the JTH diagonal element of a matrix. Similarly, the least squares estimator for 2 is also consistent and asymptotically normal with limiting distribution. These asymptotic distributions can be used for prediction, testing hypotheses, constructing other estimators, etc. As an example consider the problem of prediction. Suppose, x, 0, is some point within the domain of distribution of the regressors, and one wants to know what the response variable would have been at that point. The mean response is the quantity, y, 0, equals, x, 0, t, i superscript 2, equals x backslash beta, whereas the predicted response is, y, 0, equals, x, 0, t, i superscript 2, equals x. Clearly the predicted response is a random variable. Its distribution can be derived from that of I superscript 2, which allows construct confidence intervals for mean response, Y, 0, to be constructed. Two hypothesis tests are particularly widely used. First, one wants to know if the estimated regression equation is any better than simply predicting that all values of the response variable equal its sample mean. The null hypothesis of no explanatory value of the estimated regression is tested using an F-test. If the calculated F value is found to be large enough to exceed its critical value for the pre-chosen level of significance, the null hypothesis is rejected and the alternative hypothesis, that the regression has explanatory power, is accepted. Otherwise, the null hypothesis of no explanatory power is accepted. Second, for each explanatory variable of interest, one wants to know whether its estimated coefficient differs significantly from zero euro that is whether this particular explanatory variable in fact has explanatory power in predicting the response variable. Here the null hypothesis is that the true coefficient is zero. This hypothesis is tested by computing the coefficient's t-statistic, as the ratio of the coefficient estimate to its standard error. If the t-statistic is larger than a predetermined value, the null hypothesis is rejected and the variable is found to have explanatory power, with its coefficient significantly different from zero. Otherwise, the null hypothesis of a zero value of the true coefficient is accepted. In addition, the Chow test is used to test whether two subsamples both have the same underlying true coefficient values. The sum of squared residuals of regressions on each of the subsets and on the combined data set are compared by computing an F-statistic, if this exceeds a critical value, the null hypothesis of no difference between the two subsets is rejected, otherwise, it is accepted. The following data set gives average heights and weights for American women aged 30A Euro 39. When only one dependent variable is being modeled, a scatter plot will suggest the form and strength of the relationship between the dependent variable and regressors. It might also reveal outliers, heterosidasticity, and other aspects of the data that may complicate the interpretation of a fitted regression model. The scatter plot suggests that the relationship is strong and can be approximated as a quadratic function. OLS can handle nonlinear relationships by introducing the regressor height too. The regression model then becomes a multiple linear model. The output from most popular statistical packages will look similar to this. In this table, 
Ordinary least squares analysis often includes the use of diagnostic plots designed to detect departures of the data from the assumed form of the model. These are some of the common diagnostic plots. An important consideration when carrying out statistical inference using regression models is how the data were sampled. In this example, the data are averages rather than measurements on individual women. The fit of the model is very good, but this does not imply that the weight of an individual woman can be predicted with high accuracy based only on her height. This example also demonstrates that coefficients determined by these calculations are sensitive to how the data is prepared. The heights were originally given rounded to the nearest inch and have been converted and rounded to the nearest centimeter. Since the conversion factor is 1 inch to 2.54 centimeters this is not an exact conversion. The original inches can be recovered by round and then reconverted to metric without rounding. If this is done the results become. Using either of these equations to predict the weight of a 5 feet 6 inches woman gives similar values, 62.94 kg with rounding versus 62.98 kg without rounding. Thus a seemingly small variation in the data has a real effect on the coefficients but a small effect on the results of the equation. While this may look innocuous in the middle of the data range it could become significant at the extremes or in the case where the fitted model is used to project outside the data range. This highlights a common error. This example is an abuse of OLS which inherently requires that the errors in the independent variable are zero or at least negligible. The initial rounding to nearest inch plus any actual measurement errors constitute a finite and non-negligible error. As a result, the fitted parameters are not the best estimates they are presumed to be. Though not totally spurious the error in the estimation will depend upon relative size of the X and Y errors.